Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks for everyone who's uh, tuning in on Zoom and everyone who made it here today. And, uh, you know, let's... Uh, well, today we're doing long suffering. So hopefully we don't have to long suffer through a teaching on long suffering. I'm glad everybody had a little smile about that. Because when it comes to long suffering, you're going to have to have a smile. And we might need to have a fly trap up here. Well, let's open in prayer and uh, get that long suffering. Oh, Father God, Yahweh, we just come before you, we praise you, and we thank you, Father. We ask you to forgive our sins, known and unknown, against you, Father, your covenant. It is you, Father. You are the way, you are the giver. And thank you for the long-suffering, Father, that you have given to all of us, all the time, that you freely give, Father, you freely give. We just take authority over darkness, familiar spirits, anything that would come against us. We release you. We bind you up. We release you from the assignments that you have with us, from the teaching that's coming forth today, Father. God, just open up our hearts, Father. Let it sink into us deep today, Father. In Yeshua's name, amen. So long-suffering. That's the thing with it. You've got to have a little smile on your face. You've got to have a little cheerfulness in you when you go through this. You know, long-suffering is toward other humans. It's a fruit to others. It's given. It's a fruit that's given. And we're going to go to 1 Peter 5.10. And we're going to read there. One verse. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he had suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So it says, after you suffereth a while. Now, are we talking suffering cancer? No. Suffering a bad cold? No. Suffering a headache? No. We're not talking about that. We're talking suffering here. We're talking about what has been permitted by God for you to go through these trials and tribulations. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So after that, it says, suffer a while, then make you perfect. So meaning there's a process to go through to mature you, to establish you. So you, you're his kids, you're established. To strengthen you, that's your joy. Settle you, your peace. See, the fruit, the fruits work together. We've got to remember that. They work together. It's not just one fruit at a time. And we have to remember that fruit is a way of life. It's God's character. It's what we're looking to express. But again, it makes you perfect. It establishes you, strengthens you, and settles you. So you can suffer, right? You can long suffer. You can long suffer a little bit easier if you're able to produce spiritual fruit like love, joy, and peace. Boy, if you got those in your life, Getting into the spiritual fruit of long suffering is a whole lot easier. You know, you're going to be able to hopefully hang on to that spiritual fruit of long suffering so that the Father can pick it. You know, consistency in prayer, meditation, and in fasting so that you can long suffer. If you're into those things, you know what? you can long suffer. You can produce that spiritual fruit of long suffering. And it will remain. But suffering, it tries your faith. Suffering does. So it makes us mature. Learning, right? You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. But the thing is, it's going to try your faith. You're going to go through it and mature. If you're into what? If you're into studying prayer and meditation and fasting, you're going to change. See, when the pain of staying the same is more than the pain of change, you will change. You will change. See, see when also you could say it like this. When the pain of not implementing the revelation that you got for yourself, right, is more than your current self. 
No, you're going to implement that in your life. And you're going to change. See, the question is, how do you learn long-suffering? And that's a really good question. How do you learn it? And the very simple answer to that is by observing God's character, spiritual fruit. If you're observing, okay, meaning you are acting, right? You're acting it out, acting as God would. Spiritual fruit is in your heart. Spiritual fruit is in motion. It's an action coming out of your mouth, okay? Then you're going to understand long-suffering because you're producing that fruit you're interacting with someone else, you're communicating, and then you're going to be able how to long suffer each other, put up with each other, because you both want to grow in the spiritual fruit, but you're, you have different experiences. So we can go to Romans 2.4. Romans 2.4. And it says, O despisest thou the rich of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering." not knowing that goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. So I'm going to read this in the CJB, okay? And we're going to add a couple of verses to it. And it says in, in 4, Oh, perhaps you despise the riches of the kindness, the forbearance, and the patience, because you don't realize that God's kindness is indeed to lead you to turn from your sins. Okay? So God long suffers us in the Spirit. He long suffers us. And it goes on to say, but by your stubbornness, by your unrepented heart, and you storing up anger for yourself in that day of anger, when God's righteousness judgment will be revealed, for he will pay back each one according to his deeds. To those who seek glory, honor, and mortality by perseverance and doing good, he will pay back eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, remember last week we talked a lot about the self and the I, who disobey the truth and obey evil will pay back wrath and anger. Okay. Add a little more to it there. A little more clear in the CJB. But if we observe, which is do God's character... We're implementing the spiritual fruit, right? He will lead us. Repent. We're going to get it together. We're going to move closer to him. So we're not going to dwell on the things of the past. We're not going to let darkness linger around. We're going to cut it off. We're going to cut it off. We're not going to give it a chance to speak. We're not going to long-suffer Darkness. See, storing up spiritual fruit for that day. See, we can't be stubborn. We can't have an unrepented heart. Spiritual fruit is for the body of Messiah. It's to excel us into the Father's arms. See, internally, we have to face it. We have to face it ourselves internally. Externally, we have to face what's going on with spiritual fruit with others as we interact and communicate to each other. We do it with the spiritual fruit. See, God is going to lead thee into repentance internally and externally. Seeing the error of our ways, right? And if you see the errors, you're going to change. But spiritual fruit, as we said last week, is transition. If you're into spiritual fruit, you're into transitioning yourself. You're going to keep changing as it becomes more real to you and that revelation comes up. But if you'll implement that revelation that comes to you while you're participating in spiritual fruit, it's just going to keep bubbling up and you're going to keep growing and you're going to keep be able to produce more. And other people around you will be able to see it and then they'll be able to produce more. But you have to implement those revelations as they come up and you have to be consistent and committed to them. See, if we go to Colossians 3, 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you, do ye. 
So the word forbearing. Forbearing means put up with. Okay? So we're going to put up with one another. Forgiving. And as we've taught in other series, but I'll mention it here, forgiving is forgetting. If you forgive someone something, you have you forget it. It's done. Okay? So if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you. You remember this one? Christ? Forgive them, they don't know what they do. We remember that. On the cross. I mean, in that statement itself, you have bundled up each and every single spiritual fruit. And how amazing for him to be able to produce that at that time. We, we have to... See, we have the spirit of Yeshua, the Christ, as a Christian. We have access, because of that, to the power and authority in his name. And we know that. And we have the power and authority now, right? Because we have him. We have the power and authority to forgive one another. And it is such an important thing when it comes to forgiveness. See, the act of forgiving releases in the spiritual world. And we're going to get more into forgiving. You can't see it. But when you go and you get into the act of forgiving, it releases something in the spiritual world that you were bound to. You're free of it. But we have to choose and then we have to choose to forget when we forgive. Otherwise, what are we going to do? We're going to reattach ourselves to something. We don't need to. The Father forgave. Yeshua, forgive them. They don't know what they do. We are to forgive others. At times, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them and forget. Forbearing, putting up with one another. That's long-suffering. You're to put up with me. And a couple heads are nodding here. Yeah, definitely we put up with you in my growing. And I thank you. And I put up with you in your growth. Yeah. So I am to forgive and forget your trespasses, right? Involved in our relationship. And you are to forgive and forget my trespasses involved in the relationship. And we're to stick to producing spiritual fruit together instead of connecting, what? Over to the anti-fruit in our lives, putting that in our heart. See, if you keep bringing trespasses up, internally or externally, I, I don't believe that your spiritual fruit of long-suffering had a chance to ripen. And it's most likely fallen off your tree. Maybe, I, if it's not there, God can't pick it, can he? He can't pick it in his timing. So, forgive and forget. See, if you keep bringing up trespasses, the heart... What is it attached to? Is it attached to spiritual fruit in a situation with a person? No. You filled up with something else in your heart because you keep bringing that up in a situation. You haven't forgotten. You haven't totally cut off that anti-fruit that you attached yourself to in that situation. You have in a battle internally that you need to take care of so that you don't aren't attached to it. Don't attach to that, what's going on in that spiritual world. Cut that loose. Forget. Do what you got to do to release yourself from the bondage to that. Clean up your heart. See, when things pop up and you have to mention that trespass, it's an indicator going off, bells inside of you. You got to realize this is an opportunity to fix it. It's not justification. It, that's the lie of darkness in this. And it seems so simple, you know, but it also seems so difficult to be able to implement this. But once you get into this, 
Once you get into this forgiving and forgetting, and then you can really get into the depth of understanding long-suffering one another as a fruit of the Spirit. Because if you're in a relationship and you're going to long-suffer someone and you're going to bring up trespasses inside while you're talking to them, how are you going to long-suffer each other? You, you put up this wall, you blocked it. The, the, the spiritual fruit production amongst each other stops. See, long-suffering starts at home with your family. Yes, it does. They're the ones you're with. They're the ones you spend time with. And let's face it, we practice on each other quite a bit, don't we? Oh, darn right. Learning, what are we going to do? We're going to learn when to, what, let things go. We're going to learn when to get out of the way. We're going to learn when to put forth. Learn that. We're going to learn, you know, when to point out your own failures. When to forgive and forget. But we're in this North American culture. Oh, the North American culture. What do we do? We, we run down the one we're with, don't we? In the culture we grew up in, in the media. Oh, the media. But run it down. And then we get taught through the culture in this society that we're in, through the mind and the flesh of what long-suffering is. And it's a fake long-suffering. It's a trick of long-suffering out of our society in general, okay? It's a twisted long-suffering. It's, it's almost a badge of bragging, you know? Yeah, I long-suffered. Yep, they did this, and whew, man, I took it. I don't see the fruit in that. But that's what the flesh is doing to trick you, to manipulate you. And darkness, how it wants you to think that you're in long-suffering, but you're not. We've got to love the ones that we choose to spend our lives with, our spouses. We need to teach the ones that you are set to bring up, your kids. We need to admonish the ones you have chosen to be led by, your leaders. See, words are the most powerful thing in this earth, and we are responsible to use them correctly. Moving on, but you must be a realist in spiritual fruit. A realist. Now remember, in the last teaching, we talked about spiritual fruit is transition. And you get your personal revelations, right? And if you can hang on to them, keep your mind out of it, your flesh out of it, get your eye out of it, you can change closer to the character of God in your transition here with spiritual fruit being implemented. So, spiritual fruit is into deliverance, right? Of self. Until you can stand up and you can say, that's my problem, you can't get help. You can't get help because you're not being a realist about it. You know, your will determines in your transition, right? And in, in your increasing spiritual fruit, Okay? But your will determines the, how hard or how much long-suffering other believers are going to have to produce when around you. Your will determines that. Because of what you're projecting out of your flesh and out of your mind, out of the eye and the selfishness. And then their job in communication is to be able to what? Produce the spiritual fruit that is required based on what you're projecting. Your will determines what spiritual fruit what others need to produce what around you. Now, if a person is into self-reflection, right, the requirement of spiritual fruit, okay, because they're into correcting themselves, they're, they're into deliverance, they're into transition, then the amount of spiritual fruit of long-suffering that other people need to forgive you or have around you, is going to be less. It's going to be less. So it's for everyone's benefit that we all transition, that we all get into this self-deliverance, so that we don't have to have so much long-suffering of one another, and we can get into more of the fullness and the youth 
of fruit of the Spirit. What if you said to others, as an example, you know what? This week, I'm really irritated. I, I don't know why. I'm working on it. I prayed, I've looked into it. I'm searching what I need to change, what I need to change. Please, just put up with me a little longer. Suffer me a little longer here. A little more. Thank you. And, if you can help me, please bring your wisdom wrapped in fruit to me. And I pray that it would be revelation to me. You're giving somebody notice that you're going through something. Something's going on. You're saying, hey, i got to work on Something's going on with this fruit. You're giving them permission. If they can come to you with fruit, maybe, maybe there's something that can help each other with. See, God is a realist. God is a realist. When you ask for, a, for a forgiveness, you admit the sin you get into. God wants you to be a realist about it. Not in a fantasy bubble. You go to him. And you say, hey God, forgive me. I have this sin. Thank you for forgiving me. Why? See, here's a world example. If someone's at an AA meeting, they stand up and they got to admit to their problem. They gotta admit it to themselves, they gotta admit it to others, so that they can start the transition. And that is a worldly example. We'll go back to God. You need to admit, you need to ask forgiveness, you need to say it to the Father, right? Internally, externally, so that you can start to open up the revelations that you need in the transition. You've got to reach out to Him. He's the one with the answers. So that you can partake better in the body of Messiah. If you're not a realist in long suffering, you can get way off track. You can get into a fantasy bu bubble of self. You can get into bragging and about that, that badge of honor of long suffering. And there's no fruit, no fruit at all. You're tricked. You're tricked. You were on the way to producing long-suffering, and you didn't. You didn't. I mean, darkness. To get you tricked in long-suffering, if there was a fruit that it wanted to use against you, to trick you. See, how about long-suffering at the wrong time? Okay, it's a good question. How about it? See, the fruit of the Spirit is there, for our relationships together. It's our relationships. People get cut up in long suffering in situations thinking that they're producing fruit. Bear with me. People, I, I'm just going to believe. Absolutely believe. Absolutely believe. I agree. But the application of long suffering is not the same in every single situation. This is where people get into trouble. And it takes some maturity. So now we're going to get into a pre-adventure. Another pre-adventure. Please, bear with me. There's a situation of long-suffering with a person in a situation with a group of people. Okay. The group of people, they're in a little bit of doubt and unbelief, jealousy and control, rebellion. You know, let's face it, the, the person who's looking at this is also into a little bit of stuff themselves. Everyone's working forward. But you have $10,000, okay? Work with me here. Long-suffering that you've entered into with this group, it's costing you $1,000 a week, okay? So, you don't get into the root of the situation with these people. Meaning you don't approach it, fix it, the situation. You keep it to yourself. Okay, you pray it up. Ten weeks go by, you're out of money. 
right? You only had ten thousand dollars; it's costing you a thousand. We're a simple man. You're out of money. The other group of people, they're still in the same situation. Your family's hurt. You're hurt. You're out of money. Maybe you lost your business. Maybe your house. Okay, let's start over. Let's do this again. Let's try this again. Pre-adventure. Love that word. There's a situation long-suffering with a group of people. And, hey, you got $10,000. But this time, you chose to talk to the group using fruit of the Spirit. You used long-suffering in action with other fruit in the situation. So with the right heart, you filled up with love, joy, and peace. And as the conversation goes on, you're implementing long-suffering and gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness, and temperance. It took some time. It took some guts. Some effort. A lot of spiritual fruit. You didn't give up. You put your shoulder to the wheel. You pushed through with a lot of spiritual fruit. You learned along the way. Now, the result is you understand each other better. Didn't take 10 weeks. You still got some money. Now, you know how to accommodate each other better. Where each other, may need to, each other may need to grow. Maybe you prayed for each other because you approached it. Or maybe you forgave each other and you broke that bondage in the other world. Or one person forgave the other person. Or you, you see each other where each other need help. Either way, because you brought fruit and you had the right heart, it brought revelation and deliverance because you're doing it with other believers. You know, maybe the other person was just oblivious to what was going on and how they affected the situation. Growth and progress was purposed. It was taken by force. And the spirit was spiritual fruit. The point. The spiritual fruit of long-suffering. It can be used while... Addressing situations. Not just believing that a situation is going to change by putting up with it. Put it up with it in action. Repairing the breach. Addressing what's going on with spiritual fruit. It's with the spiritual fruit. It's the only way. This process, that its example, is not required all the time but it is needed some of the time. Sometimes you just put up with. But when there's such a negative effect or this is happening over here, you got to have balance in this. So you could take money out of this story and you could equate it to faith and joy and so on, right? You could be exhausting it to where you're, you can't function because you've exhausted it. You've exhausted yourself in the situation because it's not being addressed. You can, you can take it and you can say, look, at the, from the money point of view, and you can say, that $10,000 that we saved, we didn't have to spend $1,000 a week to get through this? Maybe, because we addressed it, we end up making more money together, and there was a benefit. Now let's take that example and take it back to the spiritual fruit side. Maybe because it was addressed properly, you long suffered it in the situation, you added other spiritual fruit. Maybe you're two weeks in and it breaks open. And maybe together you make more spiritual fruit. You're able to produce more glory unto God. You're able to do more in the spiritual realm and the other kingdom because you addressed it, because you did it with spiritual fruit. Because you both purposed yourselves and prepared yourselves for it, and you went through and both grew and understand each other, and more fruit is made, and more fruit is made, and more fruit is made. Doesn't he want what the Father wants? Doesn't he want more and more fruit? Doesn't he want more and more glory unto him? Doesn't he want to be proud of his kids? Absolutely he wants to be proud of them. So sometimes 
just long-suffering a situation and not addressing it isn't always the answer. See, spiritual fruit, and, and, and this is me, okay, is, is probably the one fruit that eventually you hope can be reduced. Long-suffering, long not spiritual fruit. Long-suffering. The spiritual fruit of long-suffering. Wouldn't it be great one day, now looking down the road, okay, we need some time to get there, where we're just having conversations and the other fruits are just banging back and forth and we're working, you know, with God, with each other. Are we going to need as much long-suffering? No. Because we got so much maturity, so much revelation, so much of the other fruit can work. Where we're at today, in this great transition the Father's taking us through, yeah, there's a lot of long-suffering in the repairing that's happening. The repairing that's happening in our lives. But we've got to address it. And we've got to address it together. So that we can come up with a solution. So that we can grow. So we can get the job done easier. So that we can let the Spirit do the work. It's taken by force. In the Spirit. We've got to do that together. Spiritual fruit. So how about knowing... When might or should not use long suffering? People speaking doubt, unbelief, curses to you, defiling that they're taking themselves up into, you stop them in your tracks, right? You're not going to partake of that sin. You're not going to long suffer while they're going off at the mouth and dragging you down with them. You're not going to get into that condom. That problem. See, the example is Jewish people have something integrated into their culture over all these years. And the, and the thing is, a person's getting themselves into sin and defilement. Part of their culture is, not that they all do it, but part of the culture is, they walk away or they talk and they say, Stop saying that. They say, Hey, I think you're getting into this. Be careful. They don't want to get into that sin. They're not going to sit there and long suffer your sin like that, and then they're partaking of it, and that sin's on them. But when you have spiritual fruit in the relationship, right, you can steer that conversation in the right direction. You can say, hey, brother, just a minute. I think we're getting into that over here, into that sin. You know, we're spiritual fruit producers. Let's, let's change the subject and go over here, brother. Like, you can apply goodness and gentleness into redirecting that. That's okay. We don't have to scold them and go at them and scream at them. We can produce fruit in the situation. So we don't have to long suffer that. We don't want that sin. So, spiritual fruit of long suffering checklist. We've got a checklist here. So we're to be patient when things don't go as fast enough. Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that one sometimes. Get all excited and I want to put the pedal down and get going. But are we patient when things don't go fast enough? We've got to long suffer. Do we refuse to endure wrongdoing and ill treatment? So long suffering when you're getting kicked at, spit on, talked about in wrong ways, right? In your heart and in your mouth, are you loving them? Are you taking care of them if they're not taking care of you? So we have to remember to keep it in the forefront. Keep this in the forefront. Everyone's at a different place. Remember that. Everyone's at a different place. You know, if we can remember that, it helps us long suffer each other. You know, we cannot base someone's spirituality based on their shortcomings. They may lack experiences that you've gone through, they haven't gone through yet. Long suffer them, love them. We all have shortcomings, all of us. The key is to realize the issue is not doing something about it. Meaning, transitioning out of it. When you realize 
The key is to realize to do something about it. Not just hearers, but doers of the word. you got to get that thing and fix it when you realize it. Don't just keep pretending to long-suffering something in yourself. Fix it. Do it yourself or get in touch with someone else that can cast it out of you. Maybe another to teach you. Maybe another to support you. But this is what the body is for. But we got to step into that to each other. And we are transitioning in time into these things. Three. And we are forgiving. Okay. Are we forgiving? Do we carry a grudge? Do we carry a grudge? See, this is the very essence of long-suffering. And maybe this should have been number one, but not number three, but it's number three, so it's going to be number three. This is the very essence of long-suffering. You know. By the way, the indicator, your mouth, the indicator will let you know and everyone else around you know what you carry, what grudge you're tied to, and that anti-spiritual fruit. See, we need to go through this checklist, checklist every few months, and we need to pin it up on the wall. We need to remember that growth, you, you, it's hard to realize it. It's hard to see it. It becomes very, very ardently, very, very slowly. And about five months, you go through this teaching again, and you'd be like, wow, I see something else again. I see something else again. Yes. Yes. You go through this teaching again in five months, you're going to see that you have grown. You're going to see it then. It's hard to see day to day, every day. What people try to do is they try to force themselves into the kingdom by books and through spiritual topics. And they try to force a subject that they're not ready for or they're not called for. See, spiritual fruit and communication can take time communicating with someone else. You know, you might be able to have a conversation with someone about something that goes so far and you got to know when to stop. And you got to know when to pick it up again because it takes time for the anointing, for the revelation of their life to come through and to develop and to grow so that they can implement it in their lives so you can pick that up again and move it along a little further. It takes time. You can't force it into their life. Long-suffering. Patience. Patience. Know when. Know when to stop. Know when to push forward. But let first things be first. Spiritual fruit. You make that first. The kingdom of God will show itself to you. Keep the spiritual fruit. 1 Corinthians 13.4 Corinthians 13.4 One verse. So this is, this is talking about long-suffering is a work of the Holy Ghost. And, and it says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, it's not puffed up. So this is a work of the Holy Ghost, it's not self. We go to Ephesians 4, 2 and 3. 4, 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bonded bond of peace. So again, forbearing, putting up with. And in saying that, we've got to get to the point where we're grown up enough, where we've gone through enough experiences to get on the right side of them, not being afraid to fail. We've gone through these experiences. We've grown. So we've been grown up enough to have compassion on other people. Compassion. When the bad abundance of their heart starts running out of their mouth, and they got an ugly and bad report. Have compassion. You know, people oppose themselves. Have compassion on them. Produce the spiritual fruit of long suffering. Ephesians 4 2. With all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering. So, let's talk about lowliness a lack of vanity, self importance. Humbleness, humility, modesty. Meekness, 
Not your will, putting others first. So you can go back up there and say, with all what? Not self-importance, with all humility, with all humbleness, with all modesty, putting other people first, you will long suffer them and put up with them because you love one another. Because you love one another. Grow up enough to repair the breach. Grow up enough. Repair the breach in your past. Grow up enough. See, somebody has to be grown up enough to go back and fix the pathways of old. And as we've said, it starts in the family, it starts at home. Fix what was said around the family table, the kitchen table, to family members. You know, as parents with young kids, speaking from your soul and your mind, from your pain, you know, coveting. You know, wanting what others have, or jealousy, wanting your turn now. You know, passing the blame, unforgiveness, name-calling, all those low-down, ugly things. You know, really not trusting God. Those things that were placed in kids' hearts. In our immaturity. Have the guts to go back and release the burden, the suffering placed there. See, let's say it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And the parent has received this revelation of fruit of the Spirit. They've come out of things. They've, they've gone past their mistakes. They've matured. They've transitioned. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kids, nah, they're what? Maybe when it started, they were 2, 5, 10. Now, they're 12, 18, 22. And they're more likely still battling with those ugly, low-down, immature, damaging, hindering seeds that the parent had no idea of what they were into or where those seeds would go. Now those seeds have tentacles into those kids' lives. Metastasizes. Parents don't know where it goes. And they lack the maturity and experience to be able to translate out of this net that's been cast. Parents wonder why kids are having a hard time in a situation. Blaming others, into unforgiveness of others, relationships, love, joy, the peace, the issues they don't understand. You know, why are they having such a hard time? you got to have the guts to go lay down your will. Be a realist. Go back and release the burden you place there. Repair that breach. It starts at home. They're suffering. And I'm not saying that every parent is doing and putting this on their kids. But we've all made mistakes. You know, why let it go for a long time? Why not do good? And if you know to do good, then it's a sin if you don't do it. See, let me explain. You know, you can watch your kids be free of the images you place there that you that were watered and grown. Like this is not an attempt to bring in condemnation. That's not what's happening here. That's not a God, and that's not what's happening. It's an attempt to bring spiritual what? Fruit, healing into the family. It's an attempt to bring in long suffering in action to repair what's there. Repair the breach. It starts at home. As we said earlier, it has to start in the family. We are learning things. We go back and we go to the others and we say, look, I'm over you. I'm with you. I'm your parent. Here's what I did before. Here's what was happening. Here's what, you know what? Now I know this. And I had to tear these things out. And I'm talking to you because we need to pray and we need to tear these things out so that you going forward don't have this baggage. And, and, and then you can have the abundance. And it's too bad that this is the way it works, but that's what's placed there. That's what happens. 
but it's my job to go back and fix this for you. Let's be free. And then teach and help. The prophet, Tom Deckard, my another mentor, he showed us this an example. He had churches that he had developed, grew, and was over. And as God brought the revelation to him, they moved from a Sunday to a Saturday Sabbath. They moved into the feasts. They moved into new moon and keeping those ordinances as the Father brought him to a place. A shift that had happened from previously not knowing the revelation of it, but God brought it to him. And then he brought it to those churches, which was he was over and responsible for. He said, I now know, I can now see, God has shown me, I have learned. And then he used spiritual fruit to talk to each of the people in those churches as needed with the transition. He long suffered what he needed to long suffer in spiritual fruit to repair everything that he needed to repair and give to those people to help them with their transition so they could be better forward for it and go forward. Closer to God's character. He'd long suffered through that. He had the guts to go back and fix it and do what God needed to have done to bring the body forward. What a great example. Break the chains that are there. And the chains of, you fill in the blanks. Have the guts to lay down your will be a realist. Free yourself. Free your family. Once you really repair the breach together, forget it. Forget that past. You know, don't give it life again. You've gone through it. You've worked it through. You talked about it. You ripped out all those tentacles and where that root went. You've, you've cleaned it up. You've healed it. Don't give it life again. Don't look at it as you go forward. Forward is the only option. You remove the old image, you speak to it, you speak spiritual fruit, and you fill in that empty space with love and peace and joy and other fruit, the character of God. And you watch your kids, as the example here, lives change and how they create things in their lives moving forward. Clean it up. Get to the bottom of it together. There's no need to hide from the truth. Long suffer through what needs to be transitioned and addressed together. Set yourself free. You can long suffer fixing the issue, right? Or you can long suffer hiding from the issue and problems. Spiritual fruit is our culture. Long suffering, right? You can do it inefficiently. And unsuccessfully? Why? Why take part in that? Let's do it successfully. First Colossians 11. One verse. To strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. We just talked about that. We just talked about. Let's go on. What did Jesus say about long suffering? What did Jesus say? Let's read. It's in Matthew 18, 21. Then came Peter unto him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him, we forgive him, till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Just keep forgiving him. As you mature in spiritual fruit, right, you will go and people will say, you'll say to people, just, you know, forgive me. Just forgive me. You know, they might not have the foggiest idea of what you're talking about. If that other person is mature, they'll not ask what for. Right? I'm not saying that you can't tell them, right? 
What I'm saying is if they're mature, you just ask for that and that's it, then that's it. They're okay with that. It's none of their business. See, if their heart is right, then it's good. But if their heart is wrong and they're out of sync, they're going to get into this and want to run around and say, oh, they just went up to me and forgive me for something. And I had to ask them and I had to dig into it. And they run around and they tell everybody about this problem and this thing and everything else. And I'm going to, I long suffered them and whatever. You know, they rip it all apart. But if people have the right heart, right? You, you, you can talk to the brother. You can talk to the sister. You can say, hey, is it okay if I ask you? I'm not saying you have to. But I would like to grow. I would like to learn. And if there is an experience here where I can learn about myself, you know, let, let me know. And we, if the person says, no, no, it was okay. But maybe, maybe there's a chance to grow together. Maybe. But it takes maturity. It takes maturity. It takes maturity. It takes a desire to want to know about change, about getting yourself closer to God. Not about self and badge of fake long suffering. See, people categorize sin, you know, into little things, you know. But you look at sin like wrong thoughts. It's a sin. It's just as important to God as other sins. You know, they're all keeping you away from the blessings of God. But based on the law of man, if you go kill somebody, you're thrown in jail. But based on the law of God, you know, if you do something wrong against your neighbor, it's just as bad as murder. This is going to have to change in a maturing process. You know, we're going to have to understand somebody's, plural, somebody's in these last days are going to have to repair the breach. They're going to have to fix it, the pathways of old. They're going to have to fix the divide in themselves, in their family, and in the family of God. The prophet, Tom Deckard, the spirit of Elijah that came the third time, God had put into motion repairing of the breach. Prophet, through God, through the teachings in the Bible, brought us tools. It was his ministry. It took his entire life to get into a position to be able to pass this on to many of us so that we can pick it up and it can be multiplied and it can be grown from there. And it'll be fulfilled over time. He fulfilled what he was supposed to do to kick this into gear to repairing those old pathways. He fulfilled. I can only imagine, if you could see in the spiritual world, what he fulfilled in that real world. But now, us, picking that up and acting out what he had fulfilled, it's up to us. We must go forward and do it. But we have to be a realist with God about how it really works. We've got to have the guts to lay down your will and pick up God's will. God is coming back for the body of transition believers who are acting it right. Acting full of God's glory and His power. And you cannot have the glory and power of God without the fruit of the Spirit. You can't. Long-suffering is graciousness realized. Graciousness realized. We cannot long-suffer with our heads in the sand. We've got to get it back on track. We've got to understand what long-suffering is and how to work it as a spiritual fruit. And we've got to realize how it works with the other spiritual fruits. Some of us are able to produce some of these fruit easier than others. Some of us, long-suffering comes more natural than others. We all have different experiences to be able to pull from and move things forward in our lives. Well, that's it with spiritual fruit. We'll close there. Oh, Father God, just thank you and we praise you for the long suffering that you show us, Father, and for the love that you have for us. So we may learn to be able to show it to each other, to act it out to each other, to grow 
and the spiritual fruit together, Father, in transition. Just thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen.